but Eric said good morning, and Dwayne made everyone say good morning, so I thought third time would be a charm. So let's try again. Good morning. Good. This morning, I have a quiz for you before I get started. You ready? It's only three simple questions, okay? If you were here last time I spoke, you might know the answers. If you don't, too bad. Number one, without looking in the bulletin, what is my name? Not fair, this side who knows me really well said it first. They get harder. Number two, the last time I preached, I said, I am not something. What am I not? Who said it here? A pastor. Very good. Remember that this morning. Number three, the last question. Every time I preach, I like to do something. What is it? What was it? Oh. Normally when I preach, I like to preach from down in the ground over there and not up here. Remember that? I'm going to ask you to forgive me this morning. I am not going down there this morning. I'm going to stay up here. A little unusual for me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Besides that, it's kind of an anniversary present for my wife. It's our anniversary this Monday, and so I thought I'd give her a treat since she likes me to speak from up here and not down there. When Pastor Jay asked me to preach, a certain topic and a story came to my mind. And since he asked me and I was debating the story, I always second guess myself and say, is this a good thing to say? And I always pray about it and ask God to tell me, hey, is this what I should say? And so even to up to last night, I was telling my wife, I said, you know, I don't even know if I should do this. And this morning, as I was up here and listening to praise team songs, Greg, who sang, reach one person, reach one person, I'm going like, everything totally added up to what I need to say this morning. Matter of fact, I almost thought I shouldn't even speak what everybody sang and what everybody did this morning was perfectly enough for me. But I still have to do it to occupy some time, so join with me in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, this morning we seek your presence. In the short few minutes that we will be here together, we ask that you be with us, that your love may be felt in each one of our hearts, and all the words that have been sung, all the words that we say, may be coming from you and it may reach each one of our hearts. But not only that, that it may reach the hearts of those who come in contact with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Every Sunday after service, a pastor dad and his 11-year-old son had the distinct habit of taking gospel tracts such as this one, into their neighborhood and passing it out. This particular Sunday, when they were gathering their things before going out to pass out gospel tracts, it was particularly cold and very rainy outside. The 11-year-old got his warmest clothes and his driest outfit and got ready and told, Dad, we're ready to go. The dad looked at him and said, ready for what? He said, Dad, it's time to go out into town and pass out our gospel tracts. Dad said, well, you know what? It is very cold and wet outside, and I'm not going out to hand them out. The young 11-year-old frowned, as most 11-year-olds do, and said, Dad, aren't people still going to be lost when it's raining? The dad looked at him again and sternly said, I am not going out in this weather. Despondently, the little boy thought, looked at his father and said, okay, dad, is it okay if I go out and do it by myself? I don't know what you would have answered, but 11 years old, where I was raised in New York, absolutely not. 
But the father thought for a minute and said, okay, I'll let you go. Please be careful. And with that, the young man opened the door and head out into the rain and the cold. That little 11-year-old boy walked up and down the streets, touching every person he could, touching every door he could find, giving out a gospel track. After two hours, he was drenched to the bone and freezing cold. He was down to his last tract. He didn't want to go back home with a single track, so he looked up and down the streets to see who he could hand this to. But there was no one around. The place was deserted. It was cold. It was dark. People were already in their homes. He turned down the street, and he saw one home that he had not been to yet. Ran up the driveway, up the sidewalk, and to the front door, and he rang the doorbell. No answer. He rang a second time, didn't answer, and he kept ringing again and again and again, and no one came to the door. Disappointed, he turned to leave, and as he turned to go, something kept him in that spot. He turned around, went back to the door, rang it again, but this time he started to knock really hard, as 11-year-olds would probably do. And then he kept ringing and knocking, and no one would answer. Something kept him there at the door. Finally, after knocking feverishly, the door started to squeak open. And there, standing before him, was an elderly lady with a very sad and somber face. Surprised to see an 11-year-old boy on her doorstep, she looked down and said, May I help you, son? With radiant eyes and a smile as big as you can think of, a smile that lit up her world, she said the, he said the following words. He said, ma'am, I am sorry to disturb you, but I just came to tell you that Jesus really does love you. And I came to give you my last gospel track so you can read about it here in your home. And with that, he gave her the gospel track, turned around, and headed down the walkway. As he was walking away, the elderly lady just shouted out and said, Thank you, son, and God bless you. The following Sunday, Pastor Dad was in the podium getting ready to speak his service. Just before he spoke, he asked what a lot of churches and ministers do. He asked the congregation if anyone had a testimony or words to say. As he waited patiently for someone to say something, from the back of the congregation stood a little frail elderly lady. She stood up and said the following words. She said, Good morning. I am very new to you, and none of you know me. I have never been to this church before in my life. As a matter of fact, before last Sunday, I wasn't even a Christian. You see, last Sunday was a particularly dark and gloomy one. My husband passed away several years ago, and left me all alone. And over the years, I have been alone, saddened, and have lost all hope. And last Sunday, being a particularly cold and dreary day, I had come to the end of the line in my life. So, I got a piece of rope. I got a chair. Went up the staircase to the attic of my home secured the rope around the rafters, stood on the chair, put the noose around my neck. Particularly desperate and saddened, I was about to jump off my chair when someone rang my doorbell. 
I said, you know what, I'll wait a few minutes. They will probably leave eventually, and then I could carry on what I'm going to do. But as I waited, the doorbell kept ringing louder and louder and louder. And then on top of it, they started to bang on my door. I thought to myself, who can possibly be so anxious to talk to me? No one ever comes to my house to check on me and see if I'm there. So I took the loop off of my neck, went down the stairs, and as I was walking to the door, the banging just kept getting louder, and I opened the door, and what was my surprise? A little 11-year-old boy with a radiant look in his eyes and a smile that I can't describe. He looked at me and he told me, ma'am, all I came to tell you was that Jesus really loves you. And then he went away. I closed the door and in a few minutes, I took that one little track and read it from cover to cover. I went back up the stairs, went to the attic, got the chair, got the rope. I wouldn't be needing them anymore. Since on the back of the track it has your address and your name of the church, I decided to come this Sunday and thank in person the little angel that God sent when I needed him most. Because now he saved me from eternal loss and my soul is now in the hands of the king. There wasn't a dry eye in the church. Pastor Dad at that moment closed his Bible, got off of the pulpit, went down to the front row of the church where the little angel was seated. He grabbed his son and hugged him profusely and they sobbed together. Never was a father more proud than a, uh, in a son than this father in this 11 year old boy. And I am sure that all of heaven was just as thankful in that very moment. Now, I could stay here for hours and discuss the importance of this story, but I just recently found out that the attention span of an adult is about eight seconds. And I've already taken away more than that. But I do want to cover three things that I want you to remember in this story, just three only. And they're as simple as who, what, and where. Can you remember that? Who, what, and where. Needless to say, the world that we live in now is exactly like that cold and rainy Sunday that this 11-year-old boy decided to go out in. If you haven't noticed and haven't looked at the news, this world is going bad and getting worse. It is cold, it is gloomy, and it is rainy. And more importantly, there are people in their homes that we have totally forgotten. They've lost all hope. No one goes to visit them. No one checks on them. And they have no hope of the future. So we're in the same boat. And even the pastor in this story decided that he didn't want to get wet or cold but there are people who are still going to be lost in the rain. Jesus, since the beginning of time, has only had one goal in his life, and that is to reach every single individual in this planet with the plan of salvation. There are only three things that are needed, a who, a what, and a where. The first two aren't very hard. The who. Who does Jesus need to take this message out into a cold and gloomy world? 
In the book of Isaiah, in chapter 6, verse 8, when Isaiah is standing before God, God asks, Whom will I send and who will go for me? Isaiah answered, Here am I, send me. The trick of the story, and this is what I want you to remember, it doesn't matter who goes and takes this message out into the world. If you think that it takes an adult with an education, a degree, it takes you to being the pastor, the elder, the ministerial secretary, it doesn't take anybody except an individual who wants to tell people that Jesus actually loves them. It could be as simple as an 11-year-old boy with a simple gospel track. So who is it that should go? Who's the messenger? Every single one of us, independently of who you think you are. The what? What is the gospel message? If you don't know that one, I don't know what you're doing sitting here. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's not a secret. It's been the same message for years. That is what we are to take to the people out there. And this is salvation, that they know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ who saves us. The third one is the harder one, and this is the one I want you to listen to. The third one is the where. You have a messenger, you have a message, you need a location. For that, I want you to go with me to Luke. Luke chapter 14. And I'm glad that I'm going to mention this point last because um, you may want to write, ride me out on a rail when I'm done. Luke chapter 14, starting with verse 15. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. You have it? Starting with verse 16 now. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slaves to say to those who he had been invited, Come, for the, everything is ready now. But they all began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have bought five oak of yaks and I'm going to check them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have just been married, therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to the slave, Listen to where he sends his slaves. Go out once into the streets, into the lanes of the town, and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, we have already done that, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads, into the lanes, and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. Where did the slaves finally go? Out into the streets, into the lanes, to get all the people that we really don't pay attention to. The first invites were people that the landowner knew. Probably friends, known people, part of the congregation of the church. They refused to come. So then the landowner sent them where? Okay, then get out of the little group that we know and go out there and get them. Where am I talking about? I have news for you. This message does not work if you don't get out of this building. It's not preached from the pulpit. It's not preached in Sabbath school. It's not preached in seminars. It's preached out there. 
if you and I are comfortable in here, this isn't where it's going to happen. It's going to happen out there. The pastor learned that when he didn't want to go out, but his son knew the secret. His son said, yep, you know what? Out there where it's rainy and it's cold, that's where the people who need my help are. I'm going out there no matter how wet I get. So the who is us, the what is the gospel, the where is we have to get out of here and go out there because that's where they need the gospel the most. Jesus told his disciples, the harvest is plentiful. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers and laborers are how many? They're few. Why are there few? They're few because they're busy doing something else that probably they shouldn't be doing. And if you're comfortable with just coming to church, and by the way, before you run me out on a rail, there's nothing wrong with coming to church. I love it, and I do it every Sabbath because this is where God is located. But God doesn't want to stay here. He wants us to take him out there where people need him the most. So this morning, I ask you and I leave with you, are you the messenger? Because if you are, do you know the message? And if you do know the message, then please, I pray, let's take it where it is needed. And that is out there in the cold. Because there, there is where people need to know about the Savior's love. If you agree with doing that, and that is your goal this morning, then I invite you to stand and let's sing our closing hymn, number 367. Rescue the Perishing, 367. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, as we contemplate the story of this young little 11-year-old, we know that in reality, it is you who stands at the door and knocks at the heart of each one of us. And you persistently call us. Help us to open the door to you, receive you, and not only receive you, but knock on everyone else's door 
so that they can receive you as well. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your salvation. Help us to walk with you each day and always. In Jesus' name, amen.